We're here today to talk about our 714 prayer initiative. I asked our church at the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak to begin to seek the Lord in prayer each day at 714 based on a passage of scripture found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And uh, Richard and Kara Chavez are here today. They're members of our church. And the reason I have them here today is that uh, Brother Richard took this initiative serious. And when I uh, challenge the church to pray at 714 each day, either morning or evening or both, uh, Brother Richard uh, decided that that was gonna be something that he would do and lead his family in doing it. And it's since then for his family uh, become something that has uh, done more than just pray for our country, but it literally has been a, a factor that God has used in drawing their family together. And I wanted you to hear just a little bit about this initiative and their family Kind of tell me the story of how, how the, God brought this to your mind to include your family in this prayer time. Well, when you ask the church to pray at 714, um, I guess about a week after you did that, I, I decided, I said, you know, we should try to pray at 714. So I put it in my phone, uh, you know, for 712. So I would give us two minutes to get together and get everybody lined up and to pray. And, when we first started it, it was just the people, whoever was at the house. It would be uh, me, my wife, um, one or two kids. Whoever, you know, was who, in whoever was in the house, that's who we, we got together and that's who we prayed at. That's when we prayed at 714. And this went on for you know a, a while. And then what happened was we realized that, uh, uh, what happened was everybody, I have a, my family's getting older now and everybody was traveling, everybody was gone. So I was at my house by myself. And 714 would come on, and so for a few times I prayed by myself. And then I decided, um, well, hey, I, you know, I don't wanna just pray by myself. So I called my wife. I said, it's 714. I said, we're gonna pray together. And we started praying together, huh? And uh, so then we started calling my son Richard, my daughter Atlee, my daughter Morgan. Um, and then it turned into uh, and Nick, and Nick, wherever Nick, was. wherever Nick was. Wherever they are, they've got their cell phone on them. Yeah. And so, we, so would, we would do a conference call. Yeah, we started doing a conference call. You know, I'll call, I'd call Richard and say, okay, you call Aunt Barb and you call Cat and Aunt Cat and get so them. So we started including the sister-in-laws. <laughs> yeah. So it just extended to where, whoever, you know, so now we, we, it's not just our, the six of us, it's the six of us and my two sister-in-laws because they're in Albuquerque with Morgan. And her son, Cash. And it's, it's a way that has helped my family you know, get to where we always talk every day. It gives us a reason to talk to each other every day and to praise God and to um, um, just that contact, just that contact every day. And it's it's really nice. Kara, you know? uh, as, a, as a wife and mother, having your husband take the initiative on this, How's that made you feel? Oh, it's it's been, um, it's life changing for our family. What it's done to our family by him, first of all, his decision, but to step up as, the, as a leader in our home. And just what this has done the last few months, I mean, you know, COVID has just destroyed so much, but what 714 has done, for our family and my husband stepping up as, as a prayer leader in our home and what my children have seen um, just by us taking that time. Sometimes it's not convenient. Sometimes someone's at dinner or, you know, uh, hey, I'm in the middle of a movie or I'm trying to cook dinner or, you know, it's okay, stop, it's five minutes. And we're giving that time to God and we're praising Him and we're asking Him. You always say you need to pray specifically. Tell God what you need and what you want. And, you know, He needs to hear that and He needs to be thanked for what He's already done. And I'm listening to my children pray so beautifully. And I mean, literally, I, I just, it, it makes me want to cry because I, I don't want to say I didn't think they had it in them, but that's God working in them. And I'm seeing it and it's, he's working in my husband. He's working in our marriage. And I mean, yeah, it's horrible what's happened, but right now I'm just, I'm praising him in this storm. Uh, Richard, uh, you kind of let this thing be a, 
a, a tent peg that you've nailed down in your family. It's yeah. probably not going I, to go away, but I've changed meetings. I've changed dinner. I've changed, you know, different things to, to, uh, I mean, we've had to cheat. Sometimes we'll do it 10 minutes earlier, 10 minutes late. Um, but we've, I've tried to keep it exactly at 714, um, um, every, every day. But you don't make it just about the country getting back right. or people getting well. This has turned into something where your family prays about issues that your family are yes. facing be even beyond yes. the workplace. Isn't that true? Yes. We pray for a lot of different things. And by coming together as a family, um, a lot of different things get prayed for. And it's just, it's eye opening. It really is. Because what, and when someone else prays each time, a lot of different prayer gets a lot of things get covered in prayer. A lot of so, things. A lot of things. So it's good. It's good that 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 it's happening the way that it is. And I think that that you know over the last couple of months, um, my children have, and and everybody the the prayers get better. Yeah. They they're not as nervous. They're not as they they they're, they're learning to talk to God as a friend. They're learning Amen. to. Uh, well, that's a great word, um, Richard. You know, they're just uh, they're just uh, they're more comfortable. Before it was you know. What did I remember from, from Sunday school or something like that? You know, that's where they were first when they first started doing that. But, you know, after listening to other people pray, you know, other, you know, like Allie, Allie's very good at praying. She's been, she's really. She's in the she, word. She, she, yeah, she really is. And then it helps Nick. It helps Nick pray. And it helps uh, Richard pray. And it just helps them talk about what's really inside of them, what, what really is affecting them. You know, like, like, uh, you know, um, Lord, please help me, you know, um, I don't know what to do right now. I don't know how to get through this next, uh, you know, trauma that I have in my life, this next thing that's, that's giving me problems in my life, you know? And um, uh, it just, it, 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 it really has helped. I mean, it's, it's helped the whole family and it's brought us closer together. Since we've been talking, this phrase just keeps coming <coughs> to my mind. I've heard all my life, the family that prays together stays together. <laughs> And man, I, I can just see how that's a reality in your family because it's pulling you close together. God is answering your prayers. Yes. We literally have a the power to be world changers from our own rooms. What a powerful thought that is. That you don't have to be the president of the United States to impact our world. You don't have to be a uh, doctor to impact our world, our scientists, that God can take every one of us. He hears our voice and He can change our world. I hope that their testimony of what they're doing in their family has not just uh, been encouraging to you, but I hope it's been challenging to you. I know it is me. We need God to forgive us of our sin in this land. We need God's healing both spiritually and physically in this land. God bless you.